betrayed him. They denied him. The Pharisees, who are not the Jews, they told lies against him. They accused him falsely. falsely. Hallelujah. And upon not all the disciples, they deserted him. After he had been made to the cross, all of them went back to their previous job. It was only the women that uh, on cried to be with him. Praise the Lord. In all this scenario, Jesus said, He had victory over Satan, He had victory over death, He resurrected on the third day upon His suffering in the heart of His people. What are the lessons? That we can learn from this situation. Hallelujah. We have about eight points that we are going to go through. We have time today. Number one, beware of the presence of God. There is God in all situations. Every situation, God is always with us. Jesus Christ was aware. God's presence in the situation. He was cool and calm at this period. Because before he went to get the man, he first of all ate the Passover food, the last supper. He broke the bread and gave to all the disciples. And he prayed. Hallelujah. And it was about to go. Yes, man. We are going to be killed. We are going to be nailed to the cross. He was aware of this. Hallelujah. When he didn't allow that to bother him, he didn't allow that to trouble him. He was cool and calm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, what is that that when we are facing difficulties, we must be always be cool and calm. We must not be troubled. We must know that Christ is with us. We must know that God is in charge. God is aware of whatever we are passing through. Praise the Lord. He is aware of whatever we are passing through. Amen. Because Jesus Christ was not troubled. He has assurance that God is going to take charge. Uh, for us today, when we are see when we have a kind kind of sickness that is strange that is coming up we tend to use soap we tend to uh, bear the experience of people around us this thing happened to so so and so and they died is it not the end of their life we begin to wonder we begin to use Call it a little news hope. If somebody diagnosed of a cancer, you will give up on cancer. If somebody diagnosed of HIV, you will give up. And then begin to count people that have died because of that sickness. Know that the world is different. Know that God is in control. Remain cool and calm. That problem will not end your life. If you have faith in Christ, if you remain calm, if you remain faithful to God, God will deliver you. Hallelujah. One uh, mother of a popular pastor in America was diagnosed cancer. And the other cancer, and after they prayed for him, she believed that. He didn't have cancer. It's, it is something now he's still alive. More than 30 years ago, that he had agonized of having cancer that killed many people. She didn't die. She's still alive. He had faith in God and was claiming that he had been healed. She had been healed. She had been healed. Hallelujah. And God is still sustaining her. Up to now, we did that. Praise the Lord. That somebody died of a disease doesn't mean that they are going to die of that similar disease. 
know that God is in charge of your life. If God does not permit you to die, nobody can kill you. No disease can kill you. No weapon of passion against you can prosper. Hallelujah. Bible says the reason why Jesus Christ came to the world is to destroy the work of the devil. That is the reason why Jesus Christ came to the world to destroy the, 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 the work of the devil. And sickness is one of the, the devil's work. And God is ready to deliver us. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. When the Israelites they got to the Red Sea, they were all troubled. The federal warrior were behind them. The rest of them were in front. And they started complaining. They started really abuse of Moses. Why did you take us out of Egypt? Is that no great in Egypt? Is that Egypt is better for us to die in this wilderness? And they wanted to start stoning the man of God before he boldly told them that they should hold their peace. See what God will do today. He asked me that God cannot neglect them. He asked me that God cannot abandon them in that wilderness. And God spoke. Tell the Israelites to move forward. To move forward to where? To the very sea. And he said, What is in your hand? He said, Rob, stretch it from the very sea. And stretch it from and the and the pattern. Where we don't see any hope. Any ray of hope, there is hope when we open our eyes. When we are not walking in sight, when we are walking spiritually, when our spiritual eyes open, we will see many opportunities. But when we are not looking with our mere eyes, we won't see anything. But when we open our spiritual eyes, we see opening, we see door opening. We see opportunities, we see victory, we see something ahead of us. And so Israelites like walk in the dry land out of the Red Sea. And that is where the Lord destroyed their enemies. Your enemy will be destroyed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number two, do away with sin. Do away with sin. I would say we cannot continue in sin and expect the grace of God to continue in our lives. When we walk in holiness, God is ready to walk with us. When we are passing through fire, He will be with us. When we are passing through water, He will be with us. That is His promise. But we must be holy. We must not be committing a known sin. Sin must all be fine in us. Because Jesus Christ, when He was the service of heart, was holy. We didn't see any sin he committed when he was in the service of the heart. He was holy and perfect with God. God may not decide to walk with us when our hands are dirty. When our hands are dirty, when we are filthy, God may decide to be distant from us. And we must enjoy the grace of God when we are passing through something very difficult. And that's the reason why we must confess our sin to God. We must confess our sin and we must also forsake that sin. We must forsake that sin and we must take the garment of holiness to walk with God in order to enjoy the favor and the grace of God whatever we are passing through. Hallelujah. Number three, we must surrender to God's plan. We must surrender to God's plan. Hallelujah. God has plan for us as Jesus Christ. As God has plan for Jesus Christ. God has plan for us. Amen. Amen. Uh, Christ prayed that there may be another way for the submitted to the will of God. At the point when the load was heavy for Jesus Christ, in the book of Luke, chapter 22, Luke chapter 22, verse, uh, 
verse 42. Jesus Christ said, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Jesus Christ prayed that maybe the Lord should be lifted away from him. And he said, he believed in the will of God to be done. Praise the Lord. When the will of God for us to pass through tribulation, persecution, let us endure it. Let us have faith that at the end of the day, God is going to come to our rescue. That that thing that we are passing through, we head in praise. We head in success. Hallelujah. Let us cooperate with the plan of God in our lives. The Israelites can get to the promised land within 40 days. But God allowed them to use 40 years instead of 40 days because He knew the plan. Because God said when they pass through and when they want to use 40 days, 40 days that they will be terrified by their enemies and they will run back to Egypt. And that will not be zero. As, it's as if God has not delivered them. And they are, they, 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 they are, they are special to more terrible than before when they return back to their enemies. So God allowed them to use 40 days to pass through in a Canaan land. Before they go to the Canaan, they have been trained, they have been having faith, they have been stabilized, they have been fortified to fight their enemies. And that is the reason why they were able to occupy the Canaan land. Praise the Lord. Things may not always very fast as we think. We take a longer period of let us wait upon the Lord. Let us cooperate during the time of our trial. Everybody has wilderness experience that we must experience before we get to our final man. Don't let us abandon the plan of God. Don't let us do for other alternatives. Don't let us do for shortcuts. Praise the Lord. God ordained everybody to make it in life, to be rich in life. When it's your not, it's not your turn to be rich. Don't go and do rituals. Don't go and invest money. Don't go and falsify figures. Because it's always dangerous. Whatever God is not doing to man, amen. Whatever we get will trouble us. It will trouble us. And we get something that is not given by God. It's always come with pain. It's always come with negative things. Hallelujah. So Lord, let us wait for God to plan for us and let us accept the plan of God. Praise the Lord. God always has a plan when we are suffering. Amen. When we are suffering, God has a plan for us. When we are passing through tribulation, there is always a plan of God for us to overcome that tribulation and then get to our destination. If we don't have problem today, many people will not turn to Christ. If you don't pass through one tribulation of order, we will not be sitting here today. It is one problem or the other that attracts us to God. It's one problem or the other that brings us to Christ. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. It's because we are having problems. That is why we are praying. That we have to seek God out of those problems. So problem, God knows about our problem. That some say He knows about our sorrow. Praise the Lord. So that God about our sorrow. He will not abandon us. He will deliver us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Number four, don't be moved by people around you. Don't be moved by people around you. The person of Jesus Christ, people around him are his problem. People around him 
were in his problem. Hallelujah. The Jews that are supposed to be his companion, they turn against him. They lie against him. They say something falsely against him. They took him to Pilate and they wanted Pilate to jail him. Even if Pilate did not find any criminal offense with him, he said he was in jail and the robber must be relieved. He didn't bother. Praise the Lord. He didn't bother to condemn them. One of the disciples, Judas, betrayed him. One of the twelve. He betrayed, he betrayed him. He exposed him. He did not bother. Peter disappointed him. He denied him. He is not one of the disciples. So that he will not suffer any consequences. Praise God. And after his death, his disciples abandoned him. He went back to their previous work. So he would have been discouraged. He would have been blaming himself. Why did he even come to die for man? Why did he even come to come and take that assignment? For Jesus Christ did not think like that. Praise the Lord. He didn't think like that. He won't pray for his enemies. And that's why Jesus Christ said, Pray for our enemies. Praise the Lord. When they are hungry, we should feed them. When they are fasting, we should provide water for them. Praise the Lord. So if we are looking at people around us who will be mis mis misled, because our friend will betray us, our parents will disappoint us, our children will disappoint us, and when we are not careful, we will miss the way. Let us put man into the condition of human being. Let us know that we are not dealing with angels, but we are dealing with flesh. Your best friend can disappoint you, can betray you, as they did for Jesus Christ. That is why it's written. You must not be troubled. You must not abandon your vision. Praise the Lord. You must be resolute to achieve whatever God wants you to achieve. Amen. Amen. So man, we always work against our interest. People that are supposed not to envy you, we envy you. People that support that will support you will be against you. Amen. They will abuse you. They will tell lies against you. But know that they are who want to put man in their, in their own way. Put their, put their, in, their, in, in, in their own way. Times. Praise the Lord. God is what you must be looking at. Jesus Christ is the only friend that cannot disappoint us. He's the only companion that can stand with us in the time of trouble. People will stay with us when we are making it. When you have one, you have many friends. When you are in position, you have many friends. People will rally around you, they will praise you. But when you are no longer in that position, you won't see anybody again. When you are suffering, you won't see them again. That is one thing for you. Jesus Christ has one of God has one of us. We should not rely on human being. Praise the Lord. Number five. Acceptance of God's time. Acceptance of God's time. There is always time. Look for Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Say there are different times for everything. Time to born, time to die. Time to plant, and time to reap. God has assigned time to everything. Everything that is said by one true were written about him. And they were all fulfilled at the right time, at the appointed time. Hallelujah. Yeah. At the appointed time, God appeared to him. 
Bible says in the book of Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. It says, when the fullness of time came, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to the heart. When the fullness of time when he came, God sent his son to the heart, come and deliver the, 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 the heart from perish. So there are times which God has assigned for you. The time you are going to make it. The time you are going to be blessed. The time you are going to get your destination. It has been written. I pray you will not miss your time in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us cooperate with God. Let us be patient working with God. Don't let us be ignorant. Patient is one of the characteristics of good Christian. We are patient, we are not trouble, we are not in hurry. We wait for God's plan, for God's purpose in your life. You will get there. We have a problem sometimes. He was planning to travel to America. And several of them too at that time. Some of them appear at the embassy. You are given visa. Some of them were asked to come back four weeks later. And they wanted to do some presentation. They went back, they were given visa. But there was no particular colleague. When they asked him to come back in the next four weeks and they want to do something, he quickly went back to purchase another passport. He had another passport. He went back within uh, two weeks to the embassy. He didn't know that the white people have recorded, they have the data, the data on their, on their system. That all the things that were presented before, they have record of those things. Praise the Lord. So when they appeared in the two weeks later, with another pastor, and they confronted him that, ah, Mr. Ma, you are here so so time with the passport number so so and so. And you are coming again with another passport. So you have violated the, the, the law of your country. You are having two passports. Therefore, you have obtain this passport in Abuja somewhere, somewhere. Praise the Lord. They sent him away. Mm -hmm. And he was not giving visa to the black Christian. Along like two years later, he won visa lottery. Praise the Lord. Because of his record, they could not give him another visa. And uh, for a very long time, I didn't know his position now. But for the first 10 years, he was being denied entrance into America because of impatience. Because of impatience, he will have been patient, he will have been succeeded. Praise the Lord. There is nothing good doing already. Let us always be patient. Hallelujah. God that allowed the Jews to use 40 years to get the Canaan man, he knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. When God blesses God for me, already on your way. God is protecting you. Praise the Lord. When my promotion to be a professor was being delayed, I was praying for six years. I was not able to have arrived on my paper as well. And I was praying at the point, at the mountain, God told me that the purpose is for your protection. That is how I relax. When it is gone, it will go. I am not going to be worried or be anxious again. So I relax. And at the point, it came. And it came at the favorable time. Praise the Lord. It came at the favorable time. But God told me that I had it at this point of protection. Maybe if I had it earlier, maybe something even would have happened. I've seen people that are promoted in the present. 
the hard truth. Some died. Praise the Lord. Some died after the announcement of the hard truth. Amen. So God is always in charge of our lives. We must go out to walk with God using his own time, not our own time. Not devil's time. Let us walk with God's time. Praise the Lord. Number six, be prayerful. Jesus Christ was prayerful at the time of his passion. When he was about to go through tribulation, he went to Jesus He prayed. Luke chapter 22, verse 41. Two, Luke chapter 22, verse 41. And he was withdrawn from them about the stone cast, and laid down and prayed. What the fuck? And me in the agony, he prayed more honestly, and he swear for the sin is a great drop of blood falling down to the ground. Praise the Lord. Look at the time that type of prayer. I mean, people have prayed that. And the sweat coming off the body will be like the sweat, like the blood. That is intense prayer. That is perfect prayer. He left himself to pray about the problem he's going to fix. Don't let us just be problem and be, and be enjoying problem. We must pray and pray through when we are having challenges. So I have prayed, said in the new chapter, it is men must pray without ceasing. Men must pray without ceasing. Prayer is one of the key points in Christianity. What will be keeping us? What will be delivering us? What will be, what will be preventing us? What will take us out of problem? Don't let's keep quiet when you are passing through tribulation. Let us pray and fast. This particular problem that is having uh, that we are talking with, how many times have we committed into prayer? How many times have we fasted about such about such such condition? Praise the Lord. How many times have we declared prayer and fasting for that problem to be removed? And Jesus Christ said, all these things will not happen except with fasting and Prayer. Praise the Lord. Let us know how to pray in all things. For everything that we want, let us always put it to prayer. And God will answer our prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number seven, forgiveness. Jesus Christ forgave his adversaries. He forgave them. He didn't hold the sin against them. Praise the Lord. He didn't hold the sin against them. In the book of uh, Luke chapter 23, Luke 23, verse 34. Luke 23, 34. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what to do. For all the suffering in the hand of men, Jesus Christ forgave them. He didn't hold the sin against them. Praise the Lord. And the book of uh, Mark, level 24, Paul said that when we pray, we must forgive so that our Father in heaven will also forgive us. When we don't forgive, our Father in heaven will not forgive us. Praise the Lord. When we pray, let us forgive. If we want our prayer to be answered, we must forgive all our adversaries. We must forgive those people that are wrong us. If we are not forgiving people, Jesus Christ will not forgive us. In the book of Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, Division 42, and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, 
forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Forgiving each other, even for Christ's sake, has God forgiven you. Forgiveness is one of the key qualities of a good Christian. If you say you are a Christian and you cannot forgive your enemies, you cannot forgive those who are not against you, you are not a Christian. You are not born again. A good Christian was able to forgive and forget and move forward in his life. Praise the Lord. And the last one is uh, determined to finish the race. Jesus that was determined to complete that assignment of salvation, that assignment of redemption to human beings. He was committed to complete the race. Otherwise, he would have run away, he would have abandoned it when becoming more intense. But he was committed to complete it. Praise the Lord. So, in our struggle, we must always be ready to complete whatever we have started. We must complete all the things the Lord has made us to to start in our life. Uh, Hebrew chapter 12, verse 3. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 3. For consider me that endure such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest he be weary and faint in your mind. For consider me that endure such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest he be weary and faint in your mind. He must not be faint, not be weary in our heart, but be determined to complete whatever we have started. Whatever thing you have laid your hand upon, make sure you complete it. When you are in school, make sure you do your best to complete what you have started. Do abandon anything. When you are doing a project, be committed to it. See the end of it. You are part of it. If you are in marriage, make sure you, your marriage succeeds. Don't abandon it. Don't let it fail. For Jesus Christ did not fail. David was determined to fight against Goliath. Even though he saw the structure of Goliath as a giant, Armed with weapons, armed with protective devices. There is no place that is exposed in the dress of Goliath. Yet, you have the translation that God is going to give him victory. When victory is seen or coming, let us have faith, let us pursue it to logical conclusion. And David faced. Goliath and his arrow struck Goliath at the forehead. The only place that's been exposed, that is where God struck Goliath and that died. When Israel were going to the promised land, when Israel people were sent out to go and spy the Canaan, ten people came with negative results. They came with very negative reports that there are giants in those land. We cannot occupy the land. They will destroy us. They are just like a grasshopper in front of them. Praise the Lord. The report of the past all the people in the camp started crying. And they have spent that eight years getting to that spot. And he wanted to employ the captain that would lead them back to Egypt before Caleb and Joshua cried out, No, we can take the land. The Lord has delivered the land to our hands. We are strong. We are going to take the land. We are going to occupy it. They spoke faithfully. They were pulled. And that was how they were able to occupy that land. Let what they are going to do. They will abandon the journey and they will not be able to move forward. Don't let fear 
don't don't anything intimidate us or now addition. Praise the Lord. Only the poor, the dedicated, you get to the promised land. If you are discouraged, you will not make it part in life. You will not make it part. If you are discouraged, if you are fearful, you will not make it part in life. You will not succeed. I pray that the Lord will make you bold. The Lord will make you strong. In the name of Jesus. These are the lessons we learn from the passion of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was able to succeed. And that is why we are enjoying the, the salvation brought us from Jesus Christ today. And then let us embrace Him so that our life will have impact so that we can succeed in life. Let's rise up on our feet and let us pray. Let's pray that the Lord Almighty will visit us. The Lord Almighty will empower us. The Lord will make us bold and strong. Jesus Christ called Caleb. Joshua. Call Joshua. Send the bold. And be courageous. Be bold and be courageous. Because you are the one that is going to uh, share the land among the Israelites. Let's pray that the Lord will make us bold and courageous this morning. Prayer. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, make us bold, make us courageous, make us strong. Make us strong against all that passion. Put all that passion at our Footstool in the name of Jesus. Grant us victory over all the obstacles in front of us. Make us to overcome obstacles, make us to overcome our passion, make us to overcome enemies of our progress in life in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Everlasting Father, we want to thank you this morning. Accept our praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray for your people. The Lord will make you bold in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord will make you courageous in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord will strengthen you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I say they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. The Lord will renew your strength in the name of Jesus. No obstacle will stand against your progress in the name of Jesus. No enemy will stand before your progress in the name of Jesus. You will succeed in the name of Jesus. Any form of problem that is intimidating you, may the Lord crush it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Any sickness in your body, I pray in the name of your sickness, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Be of any form of diseases in the name of Jesus. Diseases yeah. are not impact in your life again. Through the blood of Jesus, you are healed in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Through the strife of the body of Jesus Christ, you are healed in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Deliver in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every opposition to your greatness, to your success, be crushed in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray for people that are looking for each of them. May the Lord answer you. Amen. May the Lord answer you. May the Lord provide children for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Think of being a little help for the station in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will be fulfilled in life in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. So we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.